Welcome to a new video of mounting insects and here I will show you how to mount a stick insect. What you will need is a foam mounting board which can be styrofoam, plastazoate or any soft plastic foam that you can use to put needles in. Besides that you will need long tweezers, you will need something to cut like a razor blade and you will need kitchen paper or paper towels, toilet paper also works. And you start with making a cut between the two segments of the thorax and the abdomen. There's a membrane there, you can cut the membrane relatively easily. But you see there is a stomach. And after you did that, as you're seeing in the video, you go inside with tweezers and you get everything out that's inside. This is a female, big female from Heteropteryx dilatata. It is a stick insect from Malaysia. In captivity this one has been fed with mainly bramble. And since it is a female that didn't die of old age, she died too early. She can have some mutation going on maybe, perhaps pathogens or even poisoning is pr uh, possible since there are some discussions about young bramble leaves versus old bramble leaves. But I will not bore you with that now. As I said, this is a female, so everything that I'm getting out that's round, it are the eggs. Since she couldn't lay many eggs before she died, there are many inside of her body. And these eggs, they can possibly still hatch. So after extraction, they are dried on the kitchen paper, paper towel, however you prefer to call it and put aside. When the stick insect is mounted, these eggs will be put into a moist soil and in a few months they might hatch. It's never for sure, but we will see what happens. With these eggs, if you want to save them, be very careful with them. You would think they are hard, they look like seeds, they also feel a little bit like seeds, but they are very soft on the inside. And if you squeeze too hard, with your tweezers, the eggs will break. You might also find some unfertilized eggs in the insect. Unfertilized, I'm so sorry. And these look red. They are also round, they are big, but they are red. They still are developing the outside of the egg. And you can still collect those and you can put them on ethanol, for example. It's a really cool display piece. But you need to be even more careful and with this method you will break most of them. But in my collection I have from nine species uh, these underdeveloped eggs and it's a really cool addition and it's really cool to show visitors in the museum. So one thing you need to keep in mind is that the inside of the stick insect doesn't only have the eggs, um, muscles, organ tissue, but there's also pigments in there because the green color that you see is not in the exoskeleton. It's underneath the exoskeleton, the very outer layer of the inside, you could say. So if you go inside with, in this case, sharp tweezers and you will scratch a surface on the inside, you will see that later because the pigments there will be gone. You scrape them off. So you need to be very careful with that as well. And what you want to do is just keep going until everything is out. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it. And it differs per species what you have to do, because this is a very big stick insect, one of the largest in the world, I'd say. And it has a thick exoskeleton, so you can easily go inside, poke around. Not much will happen, except for if you're too rough. But if you're used to working with butterflies, this is relatively simple work. However, there are species of stick insects that are either very small, very thin, or have a very thin exoskeleton. An example is the pyrophosmas. They have an exoskeleton that's like skin, but very, very thin. And it will rip very easily when you're trying to do these kinds of things. So you need to really work with caution with those. With every insect, you need to treat it with respect, of course. But with those, just be extra careful. And there are some really thin ones. Uh, 
The Pseudophosma is a good example of that. They are very thin and you cannot take the organs out. In females, that's possible. And in males, it is possible, but they are even thinner and you just need to be very careful. And still there's a big chance of breaking those or ripping the exoskeleton, losing body parts. There are different techniques for that. And the best technique is to freeze dry them. But of course, it's very expensive. There are other videos on YouTube. You can search for it. Uh, mounting stick insects. And they use chemicals in order to preserve the exoskeleton. It might also work for these very thin stick insects. But I did not try that myself, so I'm not sure. And as you can see, I'm removing the last parts of inside tissue from the stick insect. She's almost empty. You will have to check again because especially with such big species, there might be eggs inside, even when you think everything is out. So just check, double check, triple check. They can not only start rotting inside of the stick insect, but they might hatch at some point if you're unlucky and that's just torture. So be careful about that. And that's about all the basic information of these stick insects. I wear gloves because, well, you can see it's just messy. You don't need to wear the gloves, but I like working with the gloves. Now the stick insect is almost empty, so what I do is take a paper towel, wrap it around the tweezers, and go inside once more, and there's still a lot of tissue there, but it's too soft to grab out. And as you see, the paper towel is very nasty. All its tissue could still start rotting. It's mostly fat tissue, and you don't want that. But you shouldn't um, go around any insect too hard either. Because of the pigments that I was talking about, you need to work with caution once again. This is a very difficult part. If you do it for the first time, either you won't get enough tissue out or you will be too rough and the pigments are slightly faded. That happens, that happened to me, that happens to everyone. And once all the tissue is out, you put some paper towel inside of there for structure. In this case, I forgot my scissors. So either you have toilet paper, which is not that long, or you take scissors and cut it at piece. You do that for both the abdomen and the thorax. So be careful again, don't be too rough. You will damage the insect on the inside. You will see that with the pigments. And as you can see, it's like almost nothing happened to it. It didn't fall apart. It didn't sink in. It still has structure, it still has body. Still looks good and green. That all looks very positive. So you put a needle through the thorax. This is where you will grab it once the stick insect is dried. For a big one like this, you can handle it. But for other ones that are thin and small, they might damage if you don't have a needle inside of the body to grab instead of the body itself. So what you do is simply... Um, Place the legs the way you want them to be. Do you want them natural? You can have them like they're walking. You can mount them the way they are looking the prettiest. I have the same method for all the stick insects to have unity in the collection. And that is the two upper pairs of legs are pointed forward and the back legs are pointed backwards. You can also point the middle pair of legs backwards. That's what you prefer or walking motion as I said. You can mount them even on a piece of wood if you want to make it look natural, a lot is possible. But this is for the museum, so this one is spread for a collection. And here I tried to open the wings, but stick insect was already dried out a little bit on the outside. The wings didn't want to open nicely. I closed them again. But if you have a really fresh specimen, you can even open the wings. It's a little bit like working with a beetle or with a butterfly, of which I have other videos. And just keep mounting or positioning the insect the way you want it to be. And once you did that, you're finished. So after you did this, the insect will turn brown. It is the excess tissue. It will still rot away. But the brown color will fade again and the green will come back. You need to be patient. It will take some weeks to dry. 
then you have your finished product and it will look fantastic. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, and I will see you at the next video.